and shall be deep with someone nice as you. D is for everybody, darling. Have no doubt that it. Hello and welcome to a month full of pride here at the VD Clinic. I'm your host, Vanessa. Whoop, whoop. And with me, as always, is Darren. Hello. <laughs> you didn't try to do any fancy sound effect like I did. <laughs> no, well, you, you, yours had to shine. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thank you. I couldn't top it, so I, I pulled back. Okay. Well, you never know. You might surprise us later. Yeah, those <laughs> those fucking bongos that I or that djembe I had when we did yeah it was a death to smoochie or something or no the beat, it was the no beats. it was it was the beats it was the beats <laughs> episode that is just on the other side of the door. So and you and you were singing when Bo was here. So I was. um, <laughs> so I sang, I sang a you little never bit know in the last Psycho Semantic episode that'll probably be out just before this episode yes wow sang to our friend desmond Being... or about our friend desmond you you never know what's going to come up yeah. and here we are um how are you doing darren i'm doing all right i think the coffee's kicking in if you can't tell by the the rambling <laughs> and as we are recording it's nine o'clock at night <laughs> yeah so that coffee really needs to be here <laughs> Yeah, I, I you know it's it's one of those di- one of those days. The oh, Danzig's been having uh, nightmares lately. Oh, so oh, there, that's a joy. There have been a lot of four o'clock. Hey, <laughs> I'm awake right now. Is, uh, when I'm getting ready to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, between, between three and four is usually Daddy's bedtime. Um, yeah. So I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but you know. I was I was complaining about him not letting me give him goodnight kisses in the last episode, and here I am. I'm the person he goes to when he has a bad dream. So, what's up? Oh, <laughs> children are fickle. <laughs> True. Uh, how's At least how, they can't how are you be. and Zora doing? Oh, just dandy. Uh, my mother has been in town visiting for almost two weeks, and. Zora is fine, except for the occasional annoyance with the fireworks in the neighborhood. (laughs) And as I I was saying before we started recording, yeah, it's kind of been insane here. So I apologize in advance to the listeners if we have to pause so I can close the window. Um, And even if I close the window and it's still noisy from the fireworks. But I'm telling you, there are like, Macy's Fourth of a job Fourth of July level fireworks going on in the city this year, and my neighborhood is one of the biggest hot spots for it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> apologies now, but and that's the only thing like Zora, like I said, gets a little annoyed with, not too much, but enough. And but yeah, what do you do? It's summer. <laughs> everybody's stuck at home to some degree i mean we're not completely reopened here in new york yeah most most uh upcoming fourth of july festivities have been canceled as far as i can tell um uh, yeah well i know that macy's the way that they're doing the big ones for the city they're actually not telling people in advance and they're going to like ev- like over five nights one week they're going to be going to different spots in each borough and shooting off fireworks for about you know eight to ten minutes oh. and they're not going to announce it ahead of time so pe- there are very few people that can gather together that quickly yeah, the people they want to tell and everybody right. else will think it's v for vendetta <laughs> <laughs> so and then they're going to edit them all together and air them on a special on tv ah okay yeah 
with Jeez. like I forget I forget who what singers are performing like on the different special. It's like okay, whatever. I don't care. I'm not a big Fourth of July like fireworks type person, but I know some people are just so into them. Yeah, it it, it is a culture. Uh, uh, I think I, I was also talking about this off off mic, but. I, the first time I ever had a gun uh, pulled on me by a cop was I was 10 and I was playing with fireworks in the woods and you were telling me a story about people calling the police for no reason and somebody called the police and said someone was shooting a gun in the woods. So, yeah. 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 Well, it's been bad. I mean, because like my neighborhood has been one of the neighborhoods where the NYPD have come in and riot gear um, over people making complaints and they've been busting down apartment doors and different things. Um, the reaction has not been the best, but, um, that is a conversation for another podcast. Uh, I don't want to get into that. I would, and we're here for pride. We're here for LGBTQ pride. So, um, yeah. And it's funny. I, I picked these two items, this book and this movie, um, because I, I just th- was thinking of the pride aspect. However, there's another uh, thematic thing. They are both international selections. So, um, yeah, trying to give us give us some culture, I guess. <laughs> some motherfucking culture here in America. <laughs> or, well, Makes sorry. up for some Wrong of the- show here in America. Yes. <laughs> Here at the VD Clinic, we try to expand our horizons and not just do the typical. Yes, we are going to be, we are covering the Finnish film, (laughs) Tom of Finland, um, about the uh, biopic of the artist of the same name, 2017 movie. And then we are doing the uh, manga my lesbian experience with loneliness by Nagata Kabi. So I'm, I'm sure both of us, unless you can speak Japanese or Finnish, because I certainly know I can't. Um, I, I'm sure there are going to be mispronunciations here and there. So mispronunciations aplenty. Um, yes, actually, and we apologize in advance. <laughs> some, some of the time, uh, Finnish, I, I, I would probably have an easier time with the Japanese than the Finnish. Mm-hmm. The Finnish, I think so too. You know, it's yeah. I, the, the names, I'm not even. I was trying. I was even trying a little bit last night. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, Tuko. It was like Tuko Valley. Yeah, Tuko Laksunsen. Yeah, Doug and Jack. I got Doug and and Jack. (laughs) Doug and Jack, the Americans. We got that. We got, and I got Nipa and Kaja. But you know what? Let's, why don't we, now that we're talking about, why don't we jump right into it? Um, Unless you want to take a quick break or need to take a quick break. Uh, We'll we'll do a break between the, the, the movie and the book. I'm just checking So, okay, let's get right into it then. We're going to talk some Tom of Finland. And both of these um, are both autobiographical pieces. Well, one case is autobiographical, and they're both about artists. So I have all these themes running through that I was not even thinking of, at least consciously in my head. So I was kind of like, wow, sometimes I actually think of things like (laughs) intelligently. (laughs) It was one of those back burner things. You you're so good at it that you didn't even notice. It's muscle memory for your I guess your movie book pairings. I guess. Or or that day my brain was multitasking but compartmentalizing what I was thinking. (laughs) (laughs) You know, one of those things. I'm not sure, but yeah, so Tom of Finland uh, is from like is from 2017. It was actually the Finland's uh, official Oscar entry for the foreign language film, I think, of 2018. In the um, USA Oscars, or do they have Oscars in Finland? I know they have Oscar, or do they have Oscars they have, in other countries? Yeah, well, like in, 
yeah, but like in England, they're called the BAFTAs. Oh, uh, I've, I've heard of the BAFTAs. Because it's the... Oh. That's a motorcycle. There they go. That's, they heard BAFTA they, that's and they the, just had to go somewhere else. Yeah. the It's like British actors, actors film... Award. theatrical association or something like that. yeah something like that i forget what it film and theater association maybe that's what it is there we go i forget but the bafta awards is the british equivalent of the oscars yeah i know that they have those kinds of things in other countries but i forget what they're called oh well so- i just i just hear about bafta more often because it's also a more publicized event and you know they have more international entries. You know, that journalism is. Anyway, um, how many of these names do you want to attempt? <laughs> In the cast? I, well, the, well, I, oh. we were saying Tom, well, the, 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 uh, um, the artist that it's Tom of Finland was his nom de plume, basically. <laughs> Tuko Lekinson. Lex, Lexanen. But it's how Lexanen. Lexanen. Yeah, Lexanen. That's what I would say. But so, and you know, and they do take turns in the film calling him. In part, there is some English in this film, but um, <laughs> well, because everybody they do else call can him... speak two languages <laughs> besides Americans. <laughs> well, he speaks German as well. Yeah, he speaks German as well in part of the movie. So. Yes, you're right. Other countries where they're multilingual. It's only us dumb Americans that are <laughs> kind of stuck. Yeah. But they do go back and forth beca- between calling him Tom and Tuko. Yeah. It threw me off but, a little bit at first. Right. Well, and there are so many different like flashbacks in this movie. There's the fireworks. Um <laughs> So there are so many flashbacks in this movie that it does it, occasionally you have to like stop. Um, I was watching this actually with my mother who's in town visiting, um, <laughs> which she did say she was actually found it very interesting and she enjoyed it when we were, when it was over. But <laughs> there were a couple places where, you know, you do, it is, you know, they do have like, okay, the massive, a very, how many, it's not even three minutes in the film. And there's like a scene of all of these, you know, naked men, naked male soldiers, like going out in skinny dipping in the ice and uh, the ice ponds, you know, yes, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> I didn't warn my mother that that was going to be in the movie. So she was a little bit like, oh, what? Wait, whoa. Like, oh, my. <laughs> well, she wasn't clutching her pearls, but she was like, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> it's this kind of movie, huh? Which but, kind of uh, gets you straight into it. Yeah, it does. It does. But um, but anyway, it, you know, it's it really does establish that, yeah, that whole sense of with the glance of the one, you know, um, captain and, you know, the high, the higher ranking officer and that whole power dynamic in who's fully clothed, looking like kind of eyeing the, uh, lustfully (laughs) the, uh, the soldiers, you know, it's, it sets the mood for the film. Definitely. But it it's it's just the complete theme of the artwork that was Tom of Finland, where these kind of authoritarian, you know, the submissive kind of, you know, relationships and and it's a very I think I think it's a good expression of well. I'm probably, I'll, I, I guess I could, let's set it up before I, I get that into it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going into, I'm, I'm going to get all into the, uh, uh, yeah, I get into the whole subculture of uh, 
the leather scene. <laughs> so we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Let's to, let's talk about the characters. Why don't you introduce the individuals in the film? <laughs> uh, okay, so you don't have to say everybody's name, like full name, I, the actors. I I I'm not afraid to try uh, any know, mispronunciation. Huh? You're braver than I am. Yeah, any mispronunciation is a reflection on my Americanness. Uh, so we've got Tuko Lex Lexanen, uh, aka Tom of Finland, played by Pekka Strong. We've got Vili or Nipa, played by mm-hmm. Lori Tikkanen. Uh, Kaija, uh, tu- Tuko's sister, played by Jessica Grabowski. I'll say the W with a V because I'm just guessing. Uh, oof. Al. Ali Joki is Taisto Oksanen. Doug mm-hmm. is played by Seamus Sargent. We got the Americans' names. <laughs> Jack is played by Jacob Ofterborough, a Norwegian actor, actually. But uh, uh, I could yeah. not find a nationality for Doug. And yeah. uh, what? Werner Dane? Uh, plays Muller and what uh, the only other name I have is the editor of the Physique Pictorial Office and that's (laughs) Horstein Bachman I was looking for Heike who played Heike who played Heike I don't see it Mm-mm, I don't know. They can't. They can't be an unknown person. This is not very long ago. Hike, he's a pretty no. He's a pretty major character. I feel. Um. Ba, ba, ba. Did he have Sorry. another name in Hike? <laughs> uh, Sorry. I, well, who is Ali Joki? Because that that could be Hike, right? Maybe. Because Mrs. Ali Joki. <laughs> No, the, oh, that's the that's the diplomat. No, that is him. Okay, so Heike was Tasto Oxenen. Tasto Oxenen. Okay. Yeah. okay, I looked at his picture. I looked at his picture, and I'm like, yeah, okay. There he is. <sighs> okay, uh, now okay. we can come back. <laughs> so Heike, Heike is Tasto Oxenen. Yeah, that's they called him Ali Joki, which is. Yeah, uh, that's that's a hard. Heike might be Heike might that might have been his last name, and Heike was his first name, there or was, are. or Heike was his nickname. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of I, code in this, a lot of yeah hunting in this book or this movie. Oh my goodness, the the euphemisms that were used in this film <laughs> because of the time period. Like, yes, I like to paint landscapes and he's trying to sell his gay male homoerotic art, you Country know, like... sides and landscapes. Oh yes. I'm interested in nature. <laughs> Can I see the it's originals? Always... It's always a pause yeah. <laughs> in there <laughs> before they say it. <laughs> How's yeah. the pheasant hunt going? Uh, I think a lot of that's from uh, what when he went to Berlin. Um, yeah, yeah, that was. But uh, yeah, there were a lot of euphemisms. And my mom asked me, and is very true. She's she's like, how do you, like he's because like he goes after he's been in after Tuko has been in the war, and he's in the bar. You know, and it's a bar where, you know, it's a, it's not like he's in a gay bar, you know, and he, but there are like single men there, other single men there. And he's, you know, eyeing another guy or whatever and everything. And then they go into the bathroom and I'm like this, I love one thing I, <laughs> I thought was so great about this was that them using him using these uh, postcard size erotic drawings 
his artwork as almost like a pickup line. <laughs> yeah. It was like, that was a way of saying, hey. But my mom asked me, she's like, how did they know if someone was interested? I'm like, so they're like, she's like, when people couldn't be open. And I'm like, well, even now, like some places, I'm like, you, they're just certain understood looks or codes, depending on whatever, you know, community you feel a part, like sub community you feel a part of. And, um, it, you know, like you're saying, pheasant hunting, that's, you know, you have your euphemism there where some people might have no clue thinking you're actually going out to with a gun trying to shoot a bird like yeah. <laughs> to go, you know, <laughs> Poker might as well night be later on. a chicken or a turkey <laughs> with some special friends like <laughs> yeah. quote unquote special friends. You know, that's. And it, I mean, it, it was, I mean, it's not that it doesn't exist now, but, uh, it's just very interesting. It, it's a, I think it's a nice portrait of that time period because it does start, I mean, it flashes back and forward time period wise, but you essentially are starting during world war two and, and then moving to the, we see, you know, the 50s, I guess a little bit of the 60s, but more the 70s and into the 80s. Yeah. Um, I feel, because I'm look, you know, I like sitting there looking at all the clothing and hair and makeup and uh, Kaja's glasses. <laughs> um, she had the quite, like some of those ones were quite the glasses, but... Uh, but you know, it, it, de- it seems like they skipped a little bit. I feel of the sixties yeah, or they sped through it a lot more. But the one thing that just, I've now seen this movie three times and what strikes me every single time I see it is how good the old age makeup is. It is so good. Because it's really subtle in different places. Like where it gets like the prosthetics of like slight jowls, you know, forming. And then, okay, what they would look like in about five years. It's a little bit more pronounced. And then like just slight age spots and they don't... You see that old age makeup in certain films and it definitely doesn't look like it's progressive and it doesn't look like a smooth transition over the years and or you know and it's maybe they don't know how to work with a certain actor's you know face but whoever worked on this did an amazing job yeah i've seen i've seen worse in movies that probably had five times its budget oh i know i know yeah the the old age makeup uh I mean, the writing of this, I don't is you, is this based off his autobiography or a biography of his, or is this just a, uh, I had never heard of Tom of Finland before you suggested we do this. Had you seen his artwork now? I have seen his artwork now. I had not, well, of okay. course not all of it, but, uh, but had yeah. you seen it before this? Before this, maybe, but it was, it you wasn't probably... like, probably. You yeah. probably had seen some of his images, but just weren't aware of who it was. Right. I, it's a very, uh, well, I don't want to say from it's my a... limited experience, it is a unique style. No, it is a very unique style. Okay. And it's why he stands out so much and why he gain such fandom and he really did there's so many people who don't know his name but his images are have become so i can you know iconic and they have represented such and been such an influence on a whole part of gay sub gay male sub subculture um at the so, like, right around 
World War Two. I mean, it started a little in like the 20s and 30s, but you really started to see it in the uh, 40s because it was kind of going on with some of these World War Two soldiers and the bikers, like the biker culture was starting to grow. And, and so like you started to see in the twenties, but it really, the bikers and kind of the soldiers kind of, there was something about those cultures that kind of meshed a little bit. And it was kind of these groups of people who were also very like fighting like against fascism and Nazis and that kind of thing. So there was there that one kind of aspect to it, but it started to influence like uh, S and M culture, like BDSM culture and like the fetish scene. And that in like really substantially uh, it wasn't necessarily a birth of that movement, but it was where that kind of access to that kind of clothing and accessory <laughs> type things became much more widely available at this time. And when you started having people like Tama Finland creating these images post World War II. And really, he's, I mean, it's mainly the 50s when he really got it, you know, got into it. And he was getting into the biker scene as well. He started this, like, drawing. And there was already kind of this muscle culture, you know, this wrestling and Charles Atlas bodybuilder kind of image. Um, like, wrestling magazines were considered a big, like, gay male pornography at the time. And between that and these Tom of Finland kind of like things that incorporated the biker into the homoerotic image that started becoming more what we think of like BDSM leather fetish kind of Youth thing. Priest. Right. Well, it, and it eventually went to that point where the fashion became, you know, it expanded and really the image that became an ideal for more gay men. Like they saw this and they wanted to achieve that. And that's what you see in these like Doug and Jack guys. Now I don't, I mean, I know this was based on things that happened in uh, Toku's life, but I don't know if this is like a hundred percent, you know, Word for word, <laughs> like <laughs> how, how it went. Much I'm sure it's been taken. Right. I'm telling. sure there's some fictionalized aspects of it, you know, and, you know, it's not just, oh, you have Tom's dream cop that's standing there that pops up, you know, and his, he's like daydreaming this image of this man, you know, <laughs> that randomly pops up, you know, it's. <laughs> That's obviously, you know, a metaphor, like, <laughs> but so, but, uh, yes, he, what he did started an out and, you know, as an ad man, as far as like doing, like drawing ads, um, at an ad agency. So it's, um, it's kind of interesting that that's, and it's not surprising. That's how he evolved. I mean, Andy Warhol started out in an ad agency um, <laughs> but it, um, it, yeah, that image that he, of the, the ideal, you know, man, like hunky man, whatever, usually in leather, but are often in uniform, um, uh, and in these power dynamics kind of situations, he, it became so popularized it like I said, a lot of people know the iconography. They just don't know who created it. And it's only been in the past few years where and I know for myself, even as an artist, that it took me a while to learn more about him 
as an artist. I knew the images pretty well. And then I started only finding out more about him as a person, like within the past 10 years. Fascinating story. If, if uh, the movie's anything to go off, you know, there's right. Right. The, the post-war still kind of fascistic societies, you know, like when yeah. he does get arrested in Berlin. The, oh, yeah. He's there with like an old Nazi. And he's like, we used to put scum like you in concentration camps and gas them to death. Yeah. And yeah. Shit like that. And just the, the fear, the, the one of the things that this movie kind of portrayed to me is that he seemed to always feel alone, no matter how many people he was around. You know, he had some people that would yeah. light up his life, like his sister, and uh, shit. Even when know. she was an, even when she was annoying. Yeah. More fireworks. Yeah. Even yeah. when she was annoying, he somehow found it endearing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and there's just that sort of lonely life. Uh, even when uh, I don't know if we want to get to him going to America yet, but you know, then there's just that. Fish well, out of water. I feel like, oh, well, certainly. Well, that makes sense, you know, to some extent being a fish out of water. But even I feel sometimes when he does meet uh, Nipa, I, I feel like there are times where he's still emotionally distant with him. And they even eventually, like, they move in together and are together for decades. Yeah. So I want the curtain. You're to right. He open has when this... we dance with our friends really stood out to me. And I just love the whole use of yellow in the film, not just the whole thing about yellow curtains are for sissies. <laughs> um, that's the fireworks. If it's too much, Darren, I can stop. No, and, it's fine. Uh, it's, 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 close winter. Okay. It, it's it's in the background. It's it's ambiance, and uh, it does not overpower your voice when you're talking. Okay, it's different than the police sirens. So <laughs> <laughs> everybody gets a break. It's summertime. Uh, we got fireworks. Just yeah. for you, dear listener. But so I mean, it, it, yeah, it's just the like Kaja. She wears a lot of yellow. Like she has some great combinations of clothes. Actually, I was telling my mom, I'm like. I want that out there. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> um, but, you know, and when they go to the little family reunion type thing, the kite that they play with is yellow. They're, they're just these things that pop out at these different moments in the film. And I just thought it, it was just such a nice little touch um, to kind of, especially when you do have something that where visual aspects are so important because it there is that element of the artwork in this um it's nice that you even when you're not showcasing tom's specific artwork you're you know there's still some sort of color palette that's creative you know it has a life of its own yeah the I should have looked up who the cinematographer was and embarrassed myself again with more pronunciation mistakes, but it was a very pretty movie. And it's lush. Yeah. Like that's the only way I can think to describe it is lush. Uh, I mean, the scenery is gorgeous. La, Las, Las Frank. I'm going to guess that's how you say that name. L A S S E. <laughs> Las. Las. Lassa. Lassa. Lassa Frank. Frank? I think it. I think that might be an A kite on the end. There we go. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't. Know. I haven't seen it. I've only seen it the one time. Or one or yeah. two times. I watched like yeah. the beginning, and then I was like, I really need to do this in a chunk where I can watch the whole thing at once. So. Uh, right. I waited until last night. I, I started watching it the night before. I was like, you know what? It's too mm -hmm. late. I'm too sleepy. Yeah. I, I want to start this movie a little bit earlier. Uh, not that it's, I mean, not that it's boring at all. It's, it's. But you have to, there's some of it that I feel like you need to pay attention to. Yeah. Because there's a lot to take in, really. So much. I feel like a decent amount of the very beginning, like, 
I I remember the naked guys, skinny dipping and the war, yeah. and then really, yeah. uh, the next thing I've really got is you know when he's uh having sex with the dude in the park, and the cops all show up out of nowhere. Yeah, and uh, the dude gets the shit kicked out of him. Yeah, and then he just kind of lights up a cigarette and comes out and starts talking to the guys all casually about the Olympics. Which, you know, of course, they in there like we're cleaning up the park of criminals because of the Olympics. I'm like, yeah, they still do that in cities. Yeah, they they beat up and kick out the homeless and make people homeless and get rid of the criminal, quote unquote, criminal element like the, in that violent way. Yeah, that's they're still doing that around the world. Um, but it it just it, it it kind of like it what my mom said because you know then he goes back to a, a park another park a little bit later in the movie to cruise a spot which is where actually the first time he meets Nipa and and my mom's like is he going back to the same spot like really how dumb is that <laughs> <laughs> he's going to get caught he's going to get caught she got it she got she got very concerned for his safety <laughs> I mean, which valid point <laughs> yeah, those, those i was like no you're right <laughs> yeah and he's oh. he's an elegant long-limbed man he, he his bones probably break pretty easily under the truncheon of homophobia yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was one of the things uh, uh, later on at Doug and Jack's uh, Leather Daddy Sex Mansion. Yeah. And when the cops come running in, I I forgot what they had just spent the last. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. No, I'm saying, yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I had forgotten what they had just spent the last like 10, 15 minutes setting up, which was about how. This is America. Uh, this isn't, yeah. you know, he's watching people walking down mm -hmm. the street holding hands. He's seeing, you know, sort of casual cops. You know, there's the girl in the bikini leaning in the door and people are just cruising yeah. around and he's sitting next to, uh, a seem, seemed to be sitting next to a submissive rolling in the back of a limousine, drinking a cocktail, and then, you know, they're all having the f fun pool party, and then the cops come running in, and you see them with the guns. And, uh, yeah, I totally forgot what they had just spent the time setting up, and I was like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? And then it's just, oh, we're looking for these guys <laughs> that totally aren't you. Well, and, and my mom... And my mom was tot well, my mom was also like, oh no, the cops are showing up. Like she did the same thing. <laughs> and then the, crashing the cops back were to like reality. And then then they were like, Oh, we're looking for someone who robbed a bank or what or no, robbed a grocery or something. He robbed a place, yeah. He robbed someplace. And they point I love it. I'm like kind of assholes. They kind of point at the black guy sitting there. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my god, no, Wait, you didn't him? do that. <laughs> was it him? And he's like, hi. <laughs> like in a super high voice, hi. <laughs> Tilts his head to the side. It was so funny. And they'd like, um, no. <laughs> like, not even really phased. They're just like, what did we come into? And they're like, okay, we're fine. We're going to leave now. <laughs> yeah, if you hear anything, oh, we got a car down not the street or whatever they said. Yeah. Yeah, and not before letting uh, Toku take their photo. <laughs> Which, yeah, he I, I liked how he, he found his uh, body models or whatever it's called mm -hmm. where he could. You know, there was... His part, muses. Yeah, his muses. You know, he's drawing dead soldiers from the war. Oh, I know. The, the, the soul... The, well, I would assume the way it happens is the first soldier he kills in war. Hmm. The Russian soldier that he stabs. Yeah. And afterwards, he's just there. Like, he closes his eye, the soldier's eyes and then, like, draws. I mean, like, looks at him and, like, pets his face. And, like, it's just so, like, devastated. But he's obsessed, like, with his PTSD after the war and haunted by that image and but he's in he uses the face of that dead soldier as an inspiration for one of his models you know 
It's and then you know he random guy with a motorcycle he sees down walking you know as he's walking down the street. You know it just pops up. Yep. So he's got the now he's got the pictures of five or six different police officers. Mm-hmm. And. Yeah, I've, uh, I think I guess we kind of forgot to say that it hasn't really come up, but it's getting ready to come up at this point in the movie. But the dude he hooked up with in the Berlin bar that stole mm-hmm. him, stole all his shit, including yeah. his uh, countrysides and landscapes. Yes. Um. So yeah, what Doug and Jack wrote to him while uh, Nipa is suspiciously coughing and I'm like, oh God. I but you know Yeah. I, I was I I guess I was uh, sorry, David, if you're editing any of this. But uh I assumed that Nipa had AIDS. My mom asked me the same thing. <laughs> and you not sure you know, initially, but he doesn't, whatever it is, you just know he's not talking about it or he's not getting it checked out. Yeah. Some, something's up. Nipa's not going to America. The coughing, being vague about, you know, oh yeah, the doctor is sure that everything's going to be fine. It's like, oh no. Because it's supposed to be what, late 70s, early 80s? Very, very early 80s. It's, yeah. um, you know, you're right around that time. So it could have been. Yeah. You know, if, if this had happened back in the 50s, I probably would have guessed what it was sooner. Yeah. Well, my mom made the comment about how much they smoke cigarettes in this. <laughs> so... And I know I'm like, my, lung, my lungs hurt too. <laughs> There's a cigarette case, which I, I was the cigarette case, some sort of signal also. You know, when well, he pulled, when he pulled it out, the guy just kind of got it. Finally, it was. There was something I think there was something with that, but then. I, I don't know. You're not exactly 100 percent sure, but when he ask him to keep it as a gift mm. he you know if he hasn't gotten it by that point he totally gets it you know so, yeah but lot, lots of little signals i mean and then the and then the fact that he after he gets busted after one of his special parties um his special his poker parties with special friends um he ends up in the mental institution being quote unquote cured for being gay. That was rough. I want to be cured. Come I know. Leave, leave with me. Come on. No. Right, let's, yeah. The <laughs> this is not a totally happy movie. No, no. It. I mean, it definitely has moments, but um... <laughs> Zora has joined us. <laughs> um, but. You know, it it has happy moments, but it, it's ultimately bittersweet. Yeah, but you like, do see him and the fact that he finally in his lifetime gets the recognition for his artwork. Yeah. You know, it's he realizes how important his work is and it drives him as an artist. And it's, you know... It's, it is inspiring in that kind of creative sense. Uh, Finland honored him with a stamp in 2014. Oh, really? Actually, two. There were two different designs. Yeah. Was there anything... Um, spoiler alert. We, he's, he died in 1991, right? Yes. Was there anything significant about the year? 2014 we're just finally uh, got around not, to i did there not that i know of i think it was they just got got around to it cool. and like i said i mean i know i didn't learn that much about him uh you know as far as who i knew the artwork for years 
but I didn't really find out much about him until about 10 years ago. So I don't know if more people were also at that around that same time finally being discovered. I know like, was it 2009? This is not why I discovered him, but, <laughs> but in 2009, he was inducted into the leather hall of fame <laughs> in case you were wondering. <laughs> oh, nice. How long do you have to be, yeah. re- be retired to get inducted into that? I, I don't know. I don't know what the requirement is. It's maybe a contribution to the leather culture and society. Which Who knows? There seems to be a far reaching, excuse me, far reaching influence in, uh, you know, uh, other art that I've seen. Uh, that mm-hmm. I'm sure oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, what? no, and you can certainly tell other artists were inspired by him. I mean, that, that is one of the early, although I think the, the problematic police Academy movies is the reason why that's one of the, that's the look that I associate with the leather, leather scene is from Mm -hmm. that, uh, that bar that they always tricked the guy into going to where the dudes were dancing to, uh, I forget what that song is called, but, uh, Tommy, you, Tom you know, Finland, like I could have sworn that one guy was Freddie Mercury in his drawing. <laughs> and I think that this took ha- the that was done well before Freddie Mercury existed. Or at least Freddie yeah. Mercury as Freddie Mercury. And Oh, it, it was. No. It started before that. So yeah. I mean I I'm just scratching the surface. I'm I'm not going to go read a biography of him immediately because I don't have mm-hmm. a lot of time to read, but uh, this has piqued my interest in Tom of Finland. And... Right. Well, he was very prolific. So you have quite a variety of pieces out there. Uh, and like I said, because he was, you know, he was a, an art director at an ad agency he did other things that, you know, reaching outside of this and and just, but his style is, he was certainly an amazingly skilled illustrator, uh, just on a technical level, but then how he, his creativity expanded it, uh, is another, is another thing entirely. I I feel like he probably influenced our crumb in some way. If I've got the timelines correct, mm, I don't know. Maybe so there, there's something about the the way that Crumb exaggerates body parts in mm-hmm. in some of his work, right? Uh, and I feel like his main stuff really started coming out in the '70s or '80s. Hmm. So I don't know. I can't tell you there. You you certainly know graphic novels and comics more than I do. Yeah, yeah R. Crumb did the. I'll send you, I'll send you a couple uh, things from my, he did the illustrated book of Genesis. Uh, right. No, I've I've read oh, some, okay. but gotcha. yeah, and I've and I've seen a bit of his work, but I know that you know more about it than I do. So, yeah, without without looking into it at all, I'm just going to mm-hmm. allege that he was probably influenced by Tom of Finland because he was also in the underground comic scene, and so yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, where were we? Tom of Finland. Tom, well, yeah, <laughs> Tom of Finland. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you suggested this movie. I, I mean, it mm-hmm. is it is presently on Hulu. Yes, I have no idea when I would have got to it. Um, but it's because what it's been out for three years. Well, I first saw it in 2018 because I think they released it in anticipation of the Oscars or something or right after the Oscars, it was on 
they might have been on Hulu then or something. And then it was taken off for a while and then they put it back on. And so I saw it, but that was like maybe in February or March when they put it back on. And I watched it. No, I take that back. They put it back on in in March and I watched it in April and they took it off again at the end of April and then they put it back on <laughs> Hulu at the beginning of June. <laughs> or I, it was weird that I was like, why is there that one month in there that it wasn't available? It was so weird. <laughs> but yeah, so I had last seen it until this watch. I'd last seen it, you know, in April. Maybe that's when they were shopping some sort of rights to it. So they wanted to I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, it's a de I definitely notice more each time I see it. It's one of those movies that some of, I mean, just, there are just so many little subtleties that you just kind of pick up, you know, if you give it at least one more, like a second watch. And it's not because it's not because it's a for it's primarily in a foreign language and you're partially reading subtitles. It has nothing to do with that. It's just that the art there was so much going on with the artwork that in so many of the subtleties of the mannerisms and actions of the uh, of the characters. You know, just the entire way that they interact in society. And, like, so much is coded in public. You know what I mean? That you have to rely on subtleties. And you just pick up more of that. You know, it, I think it's, maybe it's the fact that so many Hollywood movies just jam everything down your throat. <laughs> and it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, you're used to looking, you're used to having things right in your face. Subtleties we forget about sometimes if we're, I think, watching primarily, you know, Hollywood productions. So it is nice to see something that is kind of, has a little bit more going on, just step back, like makes you, it's not like it's anything complicated, but it's like, it just makes you appreciate more. <laughs> At least that's me. I don't know about you. Oh yeah. I feel you. That's uh, and it also, yeah. Like, like you're saying with, with the coding and the nuance and the subtleties, I, I can imagine someone watching, uh, one of those blah 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 USA movies trying to read subtitles for that while paying attention to what's happening. That's gonna right. be a nightmare. Yeah. Um so but uh so yeah, Tom of Finland. So you'd so, recommend it I that thing that I think that sounds that, like that? That's what that sounds like, yeah. Uh, it, okay. it is one of those ones, you know, think about think about the content before sitting down and watching it with your mother. Uh, if your mother's cool with it, you yeah, know your mother's cool that's with true. it. That's true. Yeah, that's uh, true. But otherwise, I mean, it's I'm not even really sure I mean, it's a it's a pretty lush movie of quite an interesting story uh which probably looks a little bit deeper into an artist that not a whole lot of people are very familiar with their story. Right. And like I said, you've, you've just, you've more than likely, you've probably, it wouldn't surprise me if you've seen the, like his artwork before. And if not his artwork, artwork very much influenced by him. Yeah. Um, you just don't know who he is or, you know, may not even know he, his name. So, yeah, I definitely recommend it. I mean, obviously, I recommended it. <laughs> I recommended it already. But Don't I do. I, but like I said, I I'm enjoying. I've enjoyed it more the more I've watched it. Uh, not that I didn't watch it, um, enjoy it the first watch. It's just I've been fine. You just see more with some of the artwork, 
and and the acting yeah the acting is 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 pretty good in this yeah top notch one of those uh like second time around kind of movies yeah S- some movies yeah 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 I've, I've seen that i know the story especially a, a decent amount of biographical films right like okay thank you yeah it and it doesn't feel like a biographical film where you're kind of like okay been there done that Mm -hmm. like it doesn't feel recycled it is a unique story um and genuinely interesting yeah and with with the remember and with the flashbacks and all mm-hmm. that other stuff, it's not, okay, well, now it's 1958. This is when Tom of Finland, da, 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 da. you know, you'll right. just get a picture of old Tom drawing some dude's nipple and gazing out the window, <laughs> and then there's a memory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I had no idea what I was coming into. I was... <laughs> When I didn't even worse. know what you were saying when you recommend when you announced it. I know you I know you didn't. You were like, <laughs> What? Like, Wait, what? Tom huh? Finlan. It was like Tom o, like... Tom o what? <laughs> yeah, I know. Tamafin Tamaflu? What? <laughs> no <I'm> deaf. Flu. <laughs> I'm already half deaf from all those years sitting between amplifiers. That's and true. I, then you gotta throw Tom of Finland at me. I didn't enunciate. I'm sorry. Tom of Finland. Like, Tom okay. of Finland. Oh. Finland. Yeah. This is yes. Finland's song as they beautifully sing around the fire when they're hoping not to die. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Tom of So, Finland. on that note, Two thumbs up. I think... Yes, two thumbs up. Um, And on that note, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we will discuss my lesbian experience with loneliness. Okay, be back shortly. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Maddie. Do you like horror movies? I sure do. Well, did you know that most horror movies are inspired by real-life horror? Really? Like what? Well, take The Shining, for instance. That's based on Stephen King's real-life addictions, or The Purge, which could be our country any minute now. Oh, and The Strangers, which is based on a real-life murder. People should be talking about these things. Hey, Guys. Oh, oh, hey, Producer, Producer Michael. Producer Michael, hi. Oh, well, I hate to break it to you, but somebody already is. It's you. <gasps> That's right. We are Friday the 13th, the podcast where we talk about horror in real life and horror in media, all from an LGBTQ perspective. Because we gay, y'all. We are proud members of the Legion Podcast Network, and we can be found on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Come along with us on this crazy journey, and as always, get slayed. And we are back now with our book selection that we often do, but sometimes we don't. I know uh, we we took uh, what was it was a last month off uh, because Darren hasn't had as well, much reading time as possible. Yeah, and I mean it was our anniversary show, and usually during that we only do the commentary anyway yeah. of a movie. So we're you know that's fine, but. Um, yeah, we're back to a book this month. Yeah, we're back to go a, ahead. We're back to a book, and it is my lesbian experience with loneliness, or uh, gite rezu fuzoki ni ikamashita. I probably butchered that, but I've told you I would try. Yeah. By Kabi Nagata. Thank you. Yeah. A uh, graphic novel or a manga picked by my dear co host Vanessa. And I'm guessing that you have read this before. I will say, since I am the one that is still talking, uh, I have never read I... this before. Yeah, I've actually read the trilogy. Oh. Yes. Fireworks pick back up. Anyway, I will try to talk over this. But no, this is the first one. And it, 
was first uh, published in print uh, in June of 2016. And then the next one is my solo exchange diary that came out in December 2016. And then the third one was my solo exchange diary volume two. And uh, I don't know when that was published in Japanese first, but it was English first in February of 2019. So I've read all of them. She started doing other things, but this is like her autobiograph. Uh, I, I can't speak. Autobiographical. Her autobiographic. <laughs> yes, thank you. Her autobiographical like trilogy. It had. Uh, well, I'm sure you've got a lot more to say about it, but one of the I don't know why, but for some reason it made me think of Fun Home, a little bit. At the just the way the that we're it's it's like. I mean, I think that's what it was supposed to be, but it's like reading somebody's diary. Well, it it, it is, and there there's a reason why the next two volumes include the word diary. <laughs> I mean, because it is a chronicle of her emotions and her life, and part of. I mean, not only did I pick this for the pride aspect, and yes, here she is an artist who decides to do this work about her own life and experiences. Um, and it's also about, you know, and it's about her just kind of experiencing growing up and, you know, exploring sexuality, but the mental health aspect of this is what I think that was what was so captivating for me when I first read this book. Um, speaking as someone who has experienced, uh, who's been diagnosed, but experienced much longer um, bipolar depression, uh, and I've had anxiety at different points, and you know, and I just. She has such an amazing way of describing it. And it's so, it's so succinct, but it's just so meaningful. And I'm kind of like, I have to, you know, I know other people have shared it with me. I, I believe Robert Ward had, he brought it up at one point on the Facebook group before I had read it, even though I had had other people tell me to read it. I know he did. He, I'll have to give him, I have to give him a mention for that. But it, I didn't realize the degree of what the exploration of mental health issues is going to be until I read it. And I just, that's one reason why I'm like, I have to share this with as many people. And I know so many people that this would bring true with to some degree. Um, what were some of the uh, things that really stood out to you in that aspect? Was the, uh, there was the, the hair? My, go ahead. Well, yes, the hair thing with the bald spot. I have done that to myself at one. I will say that at one point in my life where I was experiencing such severe anxiety that I started doing that. And it was, it, it, you know, thankfully it was only a temporary stress induced situation. I mean, there are period people who routinely experience that and struggle with it throughout their lives. I, I can't remember the full name of it where they will pull their hair like that, but, and it make bald spots, but I've done that self to myself over stress. And that was one thing, but the, this is weird to say, but my favorite panel in here, in the copy I have, it is on page 40, <laughs> the very bottom one, and she's laying down on the floor on her side with her arms stretched out in such a sense of despair. And the first thing she says is, I'm so bad at being alive. It, that 
is just anyone who has experienced a severe bout of depression can tell you that is that sums it up that you have that moment of just uh, uh, even if it's fleeting you know sometimes you might you know obsess about it but it's something it seems so such a simple thing to say but it speaks volumes and I, I yeah, I mean, it, it, that's that it, they're there. You know, it's got a she's got this great self-deprecating sense of humor at the same time, you know, now it, it, without being overly. So, it you know, it's it's subtle, but she very much exposes herself and I mean, her flaws and puts herself in such an emotionally vulnerable position and you know you can only applaud her for it you know I I can't even imagine (laughs) doing I mean doing something like this revealing like I mean podcasting is one thing and also I'm not like big time podcaster who (laughs) I don't know. Maybe I would still say the same shit. I probably would, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. It, there's just a, the sense of vulnerability that she shares in here that is is phenomenal. She's always because, doing something that terrifies her. It seems. Yeah, and even when she finally has worked up the courage to call the lesbian escort agency and she is there with the 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 escort in the bath and explaining the situation and the escort says that she's being brave like she doesn't get it like you know it's just and and that's the fact of Many people who've experienced depression and anxiety too can tell you sometimes you get in those ruts where no matter how much positive reinforcement you might hear, you don't, you can't believe it. You just can't convince yourself that it's true. You know, sometimes you just have a block and it's nothing, it may not be anything intentional. There just may be something chemical that they're like a wire has gotten crossed. You know, that's the only way I can think to describe it. But she has had so many years of anxieties about so many things in life built up that, you know, there's a lot more going on as well. Um, And she knows it. And she's trying, I mean, she's struggling to grow up and here she is what, 27, 28 in the book. And she's going through these things that many people go through at least, you know, five years earlier. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, tri- trichotillomania. Tri- it- tri- trichotillomania. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I knew it's, I knew it started with a trick in there but i couldn't remember the rest of the word thank you yeah and i also wanted to make sure i didn't confuse it with the one that's dermaticulomania which is when you're picking your skin Uh, and she's and she's a cutter too in the book mm -hmm. you know um i i never did that but you know It's, uh, I've had very dark moments in my life and I know a lot of other people who have, um, you know, we've been thankful to get through the other side, but like I said, this is just some of these moments she captures are so just like even something as simple where she's talking about, Oh, I'm finding like changing my clothes and every day and taking a bath or shower every day. Like, and it amazing, like 
it makes her feel so much better and lightens her mood. Something that simple, that just that element of self-care that you take for granted a lot of times. But if you've gotten in a rut of depression, like, okay, you, you start letting things go. The dishes go. You stop changing your clothes all the time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's... You know, it all these different things. Yeah. I've, I've it depends lucky. on how bad your depression is. Very much so. And I've, I've never really been accused of being depressed. I mean, <laughs> a surprisingly or maybe not surprisingly high number of my romantic partners have all had serious depression and things like that. And some of them would just laugh at what I would consider a sad song and stuff. But yeah, I, I've definitely been involved with some cutters, especially in high school. And this, yeah, the she sort of panel to panel reminded me of so many different, not even just romantic partners, just so many different people I know. Yeah, you know, male and female, uh, you know, not just that you know there one of the one of the panels that really stood out to me was uh that single panel or maybe it was like a three panel page but it was the the scale with anxiety about human contact and sexual pleasure going up against each other i don't know if you're right that right now. yeah no i know exactly what you're talking about no i that's actually one thing that caught my eye too because even when she's in this moment, she just can't, like, get out of her own head and out of these anxieties for more than a few seconds. Yeah. <laughs> and I, it's like, and it's there and spoils anything, you know, any moment. Even though she still does experience a sense of liberation, you know. It does ease some anxiety for her. Yeah. You know? Um, have you read anything else by her? Or is her has her diary... Because I know she said early on in the comic that she was getting encouraged by people to start doing manga. Uh, which, by the way, I don't know if uh, this is just a unique thing from the app or not or if it's unique to the type of comic we read but in uh the comiXology app it offers guided reading so you don't read it wrong oh my my hard copy i have of this yeah if you look at it the typical american westerner way and you open from one side, like where you're going and turning the pages to the left. Mm -hmm. The first thing you see after you open the cover is directions on how to read this kind <laughs> of comic. It is perfect. It is a perfect illustration, has everything numbered. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of it in digital form. I turned it off because this isn't my first. But I tried well, it out for a little the, while. This, this was the first one I had read. Okay. This was the first one I had read. Even though I had a general sense of how it was supposed to go, because I know Japanese books. <laughs> <laughs> I understand how they function. But I wasn't sure how the panels were going to be laid out completely. Um, so that's why I just, you know, that's why I was like, okay, got it. You know? Um, and I, I don't typically read graphic novels and comics anyway, as you know, but you have certainly gotten me to read more. But her third, the third in this trilogy does have like a bonus chapter that's of a new thing she was working on. Um, I don't know if she's completed it yet. I mean, she may have and it's just not published in English yet, but. Is... It was something totally unrelated and not, it was um, totally fictional okay. and it was good. I really enjoyed it. 
it was like, like a nice kind of like feminist kind of kick butt type thing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It had kind of, a, it just kind of had this, 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 uh, this vibe that was less, uh, this was more like the stereotype of a shrinking violet a little bit. <laughs> And this is much more, like, I guess much more confident women or female characters. Okay, right on. I mean, it was only, like, one chapter of it, but I I enjoyed it, and that's why I'm like, okay, yeah, I'd check out more of her stuff. Um, Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'd recommend it. I did. But, um, like I said, it's just what gets me is, is just this whole thing of the way she speaks about mental health. I mean, she certainly, you know, and while, you know, this is pride and I mean, in that aspect, I will say she does she hasn't really explored her sexuality or sexual, I mean, limited amount of exploring her sexual, her sense of sexual orientation and her gender identity. I feel even a little bit, she does identify as female, but there's even, you know, there's a point where she's even saying, you know, she's, never kind of thought of herself as a woman, but she knows she is, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing, like kind of feeling like, um, uh, uh, I know I'm a woman, but I'm awkward in my own skin and I don't know whatever, but she is, you know, and that's still how she identifies. But, uh, so it's interesting. Just, it's, it's just something that she doesn't talk much about, but you certainly see, from of her some from some of her actions to how that's expressed and i think that's kind of a nice way of putting it she just like only really blatantly addresses it in passing and then you just see it in action and that speaks more you know that speaks volumes in my opinion and i think it's probably a better way of handling it for you know in some stories uh, because it's her story and it really, you get a, you get a very much of a sense of, I'm, and maybe some of this is, I don't know, there's something that's slightly fictionalized, but I get a sense from what she said that it isn't. <laughs> so you just feel like she is a real genuine character and so three-dimensional the way everything is conveyed with the drawings and the writing oh for sure uh, the, the even though she's, I mean, she's very succinct yes uh, e- easy to read uh, the the bonus chapter on the one i have is her going for the second time and the lady she got uh, just started her period. That's the bonus yeah. chapter on the one I've got. Wait a minute. I think the, is that in the one I have or do I have a different bonus chapter? Let me see. No, I think you might be right. Yeah. They're walking in the rain. Oh yeah. You're right. Thank you. I had to check again no, okay. because it, I, because after we did my friend Dahmer, and we had different versions of it. I had to check. Yeah, I remember that, that is true. We that. Did have I just different versions. Yeah, I remembered reading that there are bonus chapter, and I remembered reading what you were describing, but I just didn't know if they were one and the same. And they are. Well, and in this I... case, sorry, I said in this case they are. <laughs> and I checked, and at the very end of this. The first thing you see is reading directions with the numbers on the panels. 
as if you know because i didn't and uh i mean i i opened it the proper way but i guess if you could right. somehow accidentally open a digital comic book on the <laughs> second to last page <laughs> right the, it, it was like what you had on uh your your physical one um, right well what so in your digital copy what colors did you have uh, a lot of pink, pink and black. Okay. A lot of pink so, and black you know, it and, is and, and white and gray. Yeah. And gray. White and gray. No, no. And that's exactly what it is. I just didn't know what, if they were doing your copy without the pink in there. Oh yeah. Uh, oh. Because pink is the only color, the actual color. Everything else is, you know, black and white and gray. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll I'll send you a screenshot of of what I had what I had been looking at. Uh, no, I I mean because I've gotten I've gotten digital copies of graphic novels and comics before, and they were only black and white, like, and yeah, gray tones. But even though they came in color, they were originally published in color. <laughs> That's why I always ask. Mm, yeah, it, it would be a bummer if it was a poor translation of the work. Well, and I mean, and even though she uses such a limited amount of colors, it doesn't need to be elaborate. She's just put everything very simply and it's right there for you to see and digest. And that's why it's an easy, quick read. And, you know, it makes it enjoyable. I mean, she has an interesting enough story. I mean, just like Tama Finland. Yeah, a good you recommend know, for this month. Well, a good recommend for any time. Um, mm -hmm. But I think a very appropriate for this time of year and this time. And, you know, I would I would recommend the two sequels to this as well. Um, because they delve much more into the mental health type things uh if you enjoy that aspect about this i would say absolutely go for those because it ends up with her because you know she has an eating disorder too so she that one of the many issues you know she has and so she ends up and if later on you see all these other things different things that happen as she gets older and you know how she ends up going in and out of hospitals and it's and really how she does continue to struggle over the years even though what you see here with her at 28 she's made great progress but of course she still has a ways to go and then even when we see her you know a little bit later she's you know of course she's still struggling but she's still trying, you know, as much as she can. But there's one thing I will, the one thing, the one last thing I do want to say about this before I, I guess I wrap this up. But one other panel I really enjoy in here is it's near the end where she's talking about how she's having a hard time when she's gotten contacted about doing all this uh, different work and being encouraged, you know, to write, to create more. She's just like, I can't do it. And basic. And, and so she's like, that points out the difference between being late, quote, being lazy and quote, being unable to try. And if you have experienced a deep depression, unable to try is a big thing. And unfortunately you, that sometimes gets mistaken often gets mistaken for being lazy or procrastinating. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And it's, and it's just like, it's not that I don't want to, it's just that I can't, you know, for whatever it is, there's just a block. You just physically, mentally cannot and yeah 
simple things in there that speak volumes. That's all I got to say. So, and definitely get much more of that in the, the next two. All right. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty interesting journey she goes on. So you re recommend this plus extra reading. I do. Bonus work. Bonus. You'll get a gold star. There we go. <laughs> on your chart yep so after that darren yes what are we going to be doing next month all right like i said you might <laughs> you might regret this because i was only somewhat presuming that i was gonna have to say this at the end of the episode but wasn't sure, but it's happened before. Uh, maybe we'll talk this out a little bit because uh, I do have final say. <laughs> but sure, uh, I was thinking we either do mm -hmm. a sort of light, especially with the idea of another uh, thing that we might be doing in July. Right. Uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay. Uh, we maybe do a movie that we've talked about doing before, uh, The People versus Larry Flint. Okay. Or, uh, Jaws and Jaws. Uh, the book is about 270 pages. Or the Jaws book and Deep Blue Sea. Hmm. That's, that's where my brain got trying to devote myself 99.9% .9 to this episode while trying to figure that out. Um, I, you know what I think I could be up for because every year, you know, we got to have a little bit of a trash EP trade. Mm -hmm. I think we have to go with Jaws the book and Jaws the movie. Okay. Have you ever read the book? I have not. Okay. There are some I'm key parts to that are very it. different. Okay. So, okay. I'm anxious to read it. I'm anxious to read it, actually. That's why I, that's the other reason why I suggested it. Okay. It's my choice. Cool. Yeah. So, I, I, I know we, it was the, the first one that I had thought of. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we don't often try to do, I think what, the last time we did the straight up book and movie was um what monster and monster or let the right one or no we didn't we didn't do that with let the right one in because that book is too no we didn't long. um but we, we no were, we didn't do monster and Mon there was no yeah. book for monster um, it was a different book so maybe my friend Dahmer might have been the last yeah. time we did the the book and the movie straight together but yeah so i figured you know jaws yeah. and jaws it's summer it takes well it, it's a july movie a it july takes place movie. on fourth of july fourth of july part of it so yep. we need those Perfect. summer dollars you know we got politicians doing stuff when it's kind of dangerous so we, we might <laughs> yeah uh, you know we might have some of that there uh but so yeah okay good jaws and jaws I, jaws and jaws i am so up for that good suggestion darren I knew there was a reason I kept you around. <laughs> Every once in a while. No, you put up with me, so. 60% <laughs> of the time, I work every time. <laughs> uh, do we, we, let's see, do we have any un, any unfinished business, or do we say thank well, you for listening? Well, I was going to say, I was going to say, the books that I put out there as an offer last month are still up for grabs if anybody would like them. So we will give you an additional month to get in. So I probably, we won't be recording for the, until like mid to the third week, like second, third week of July. So yeah. And what does one have to do? Just uh, email us at uh, vdclinicpod at gmail.com and say, hey, I would like that six-volume set of Scott Pilgrim versus the world. So 
Cool. And I will send them to you. And I guess possibly we would be open to if you contact us via Facebook Messenger. That or via Twitter. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Sure. Yeah, that works. We're yeah. To open it up just so. in case, just in case people are on the internet, but they don't like to email. Yeah, I know. I get it. So unless your boy, you know, you could be say, no, you're using a Gmail address. I'm, I hate Google today. Yeah. <laughs> I refuse to participate. <laughs> so we've got something. Anyway. We've spread it across at least two companies. Right. Right. <laughs> anyway, on that note, is there uh, anything going on that you would like to outside of the show that you would like to share? Oh, well, you know, you can come across uh, if you are uh, unaware of the, podcast under the uh, stairs summer series uh, that our dear friend Duncan McLeish which you will know from many of his own podcasts and our uh, Nightbreed, Nightseed Duncan and Bo uh, Cabal and our Rashomon and our Rashomon and and Ghost Dog (laughs) yeah uh, but this is the best uh, over there. He is doing his massive summer series that uh, ends with a round table of, I don't even know, uh, 10 to 20 podcasters <laughs> talking about this is uh, 2000 to uh, the best of that, that decade starting in 2000. I am on 2001 and 2005. Uh, over on the Atomic Age Saucer cast, uh, we will be doing the Black Scorpion. Uh, that is the sci-fi podcast that I have with uh, Court Psyops and Jerry Herring. Uh, that we get together every couple months, <laughs> and I rant about the Cold War, and we talk about old movies, and um, that's Psycho Semantic where we first podcasted together. Uh, I have no idea what is coming up. Uh, sometime around the time that you're hearing this episode, our dear friend that I can't remember if I mentioned them before we started recording, but uh, Desmond wanted to get together and talk about the 1980 Al Pacino movie, Cruising. Oh my God, I just recently rewatched that. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking good oh right? my god it is so good it is so good but wrong at the same time uh, we, we, we talked about the the protests speaking and... of speaking of the leather scene yeah, yeah. in the tom of finland ideal <laughs> oh Sorry. Al pacino and your wrong handkerchiefs Oh my goodness. (laughs) I like to watch. No, no Al Pacino. That's the harder one to fake, I would think. But uh, yeah, we get into that, and that's where I was singing uh, Desmond. And okay. Yeah, so that's that's that. I just finished editing that today as you and I record this. And so I'm, I'm working on writing a new theme song for that show so i don't run out of all the song that i have all the music that i have permission to use too fast uh so depends on how brian wilson i get with my bastardization of uh american patriotic songs i think that's it i you know i brought the the band slut drummer part of me to podcasting i have so many podcasts i think the midnight horror show is Um, still not doing anything yeah you're 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 becoming quite the dunk in yourself (laughs) yeah i I only i only have to edit one show though so that's that's key (laughs) one or fewer shows He, he edits more so you're not you're not quite as crazy I mean, we love Duncan, but he's he's a little crazy. And our 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 uh, our powers combine whenever the Midnight Horror Show happens, because you know that's him and me and Fancy Mark. Wonder Twin powers activate. Yep, the double yeah. D's. Anyway, 
yeah that was a good episode uh thank you everybody for listening to this point if you are still hearing my voice if not you will shortly be hearing us in a more professional way say thank you for listening you can find our podcast if you don't know how you found it at this point on most of your favorite podcatchers and we can be contacted at vd clinic pod in most most places uh, i think that's actually in that's it for that's twitter instagram email legion podcasts you got it spotify <laughs> All the places. Oh. We'll see. We'll see you soon. With uh, I'm not sure which thing we'll be doing first, but uh, do, do we want to say or cut out that we are hoping on bringing back quarantine theater next month? Yeah, we we realize it's been a while since we've done some quarantine theater, so um, so expect some of that coming up. And uh, a little not. I think actually, considering our July selection, um, the listeners and I get a double dose of that in july all right yeah good scenes. i think we might be able to swing that yeah all right so yeah big plans hopefully big they don't plans. all go to shit but they should yes but yes you never know <laughs> yes for now cool for things. now mm-hmm. and also for now i am darren and i am vanessa Thank you for listening and happy pride, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the VD Clinic. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can find us at Twitter at VD Clinic Pod or reach us via email at VD Clinic Pod at gmail.com. We also have a Facebook group, VD Clinic Podcast. We'd love to hear your feedback, suggestions, and more.